Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Rip City Rundown podcast. I'm your host, and I'll be walking you through some of the recent Trailblazers news regarding free agency, trades, and the upcoming draft. The basketball world has been on fire recently. As you look at the couple past couple trades, one including the Blazers, and you look at Drew Holiday's going to the Bucks. You can see James Harden going to the Nets. A lot, a lot is going down. But we're going to focus on the Portland Trail Blazers. Obviously, that's who we want to hear about. And I'm just going to start off with the big news. Um, the Blazers traded for Robert Covington. A huge move for the Blazers. A guy that, in my opinion, we've... A, a type of guy we've needed for the last couple years. A 3 and D. Prototypical 3 and D. And we didn't have to give up too much. And on paper, it may look like, why did we give up all this? But um, I think... If you dig deeper into it, it's a very, very good trade. So we give up Trevor Ariza. Um, while Ariza in his, what, three months with the Blazers, two months with the Blazers, he, he played very well. I was very excited about what he brought to the team. Um, he brought some veteran leadership. He brought some defense. He brought some big-time play to the wing position. Um, he wasn't going to help us really that much this year. Um and if you see a guy like Robert Covington, you're going to take him over Trevor Ariza 10 times out of 10. Now, the kicker to this trade and the reason this trade went down is because of the two first-round picks that were attached, one in 2020 and one in 2021. So the Blazers will not have a first-round pick for the next two drafts. And I think that's perfectly fine. That is perfectly fine to me because these past couple drafts, the Blazers have not really gotten anybody that's super helpful. The last pick I can think of um, in the first round that has turned out to be a huge part of a long playoff team, um, maybe Zach Collins, you could say, falls under that category, maybe. But our best pick in the last couple years has been Gary Trent, and that was a second-round pick. Um, we tend to always get around the 16 to 24 range, you know, that mid-tier playoff um, team and we always end up drafting a guy that we classify as a project. You look at Anthony Simons, we picked with the 24th overall pick um, out of IMG, and then Nasir Little, the 25th pick um, out of UNC. Both of those guys were high recruits and didn't really pan out. Um, Nasir didn't pan out in college, and then um, Simons never went to college. He actually took a gap year. And both of those guys, while they have high potential, and if they turn out to be what we think they will be, they could be elite players. They're projects, and they're going to take a while to develop, and right now, time is our biggest enemy, and we cannot um, just continue to waste time to wait for these guys to develop. So we're probably going to get another classified project, and that's just something we can't wait on. We can't wait on more projects. So getting rid of these two first-round picks, well, yes, you're not going to be able to see the Blazers make a pick this year. Um it's for the better purpose of the team, and it signals that, again, we are trying to win now. We have to win now. Um, we have our best player and f- most talented player in franchise history. Um, big, best leader in franchise history in Damian Lillard, and we got to get him one more run to the playoffs, or excuse me, to like the finals. Try to get him to the finals. Uh, the 2021 pick, it'll probably end up falling in the 20s, so losing that pick won't matter to me. Um, so Covington will probably just slide into the starting four spot. Um, obviously, with the Rockets, he could move to the small ball five if needed. And that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Um, but he'll probably start at the four. We'll obviously have Damon, CJ, and Nurk. And then Covington will go to the four. And then the three, um, that'll be interesting. We'll get into some people that could go into that later and some people that won't, obviously. Um, so... The pickup for Covington, it's a great it's a great deal. It's an absolute great deal. Now, this deal will not be finalized until after Wednesday's draft. So when you're watching the draft and you, you see the 16th pick, it's going to say the Blazers have taken blah, blah, blah. The Blazers will still make the pick. It'll just be for Houston, so they'll put on a Blazer hat and all of that. Um, so why and more reasons why this is a great trade. Um, it's a very affordable price. Um Covington's under contract for two years at $12 million. Ariza was under contract for just one more year. So we get two years of Robert Covington, which will be great, great to have. I think he's a great fit for this team. An absolutely beautiful fit. Um, 
And if you look back at this, just a lot of snowball effects ended up getting this trade. So what turned out, we ended up, what, what this all started, the whole reason we've been able to make this is back, obviously, I believe it was in June of the offseason, uh, the Blazers traded Evan Turner for Kent Bazemore. So that was the opening piece to this trade, if you just look at the snowball effects. It was Evan Turner for Ken Bazemore. Uh, then Ken Bazemore and Anthony Tolliver turned, and two second-round picks, turned into Trevor Ariza, Wenyan, Gabriel, and Caleb Swanigan. So we pick up, so if you're looking at this, you're looking right now at two second-round picks and Kent Bazemore for Trevor Ariza. And then we turn Trevor Ariza and two first into Robert Covington. So this it turned out to be Evan Turner, two second-round picks, two first-round picks for Robert Covington. And you can just throw in Wenyan Gabriel if you want to. Because, yeah, I mean, it's, he's been, he was good in the playoffs, winning Gabriel. So that just shows that. So that's a lot of value there. A lot, a lot of value um, from Evan Turner, if really. Evan Turner, two first-round picks. Um, what's funny to see is Robert Covington's already changed his location on Twitter to Portland. So these fans are going to absolutely love him. They're going to absolutely ro love Rocco. Um, I'm excited to have him. Very excited to have him. Um, so he'll be a good pick and roll guy to have on this team. And it just shows the win now mentality that the Blazers are having. And I love to see it. Love to see the win now mentality for the Blazers. Um, so he's the best defender that Portland's had on paper in the stats in the Damian Lillard area, at least for the wing area. I mean, there's guys you could argue as more talent defensively, but he's got to be just on paper the best defensive player. Um, he gives us um, just more value in almost every measure of the game. He's a better shooter. He's a really good shooter. He's career 36% shooter, which is very good. Not elite, but very good. And he's an, obviously a great defender. Uh, he's someone that's going to get into passing lanes, get deflections. And that's something that the Blazers have not seen recently um, in the past couple of years. Uh, he truly has size for a wing defender. Uh, we've obviously lacked size for our wing defenders, such as like Gary Trent. Um, we tried to run at some wing def as a wing defender, and that obviously didn't work out. But this guy has absolute true size. He's a great rebounder for his position, and he blocks shots. If you don't remember, he was averaging like three blocks a game one month this year. So he 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 can get up and block those shots. Um, he's not a creator, which is. Um, not bad because it's not something we need with this offense with Damon CJ. But if the ball's coming to him, he's not going to create a play. He's more likely going to shoot or he's just going to like stop and slow down the offense. So it's he's not going to he's not like a Nurkic where he's going to create plays. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great pickup for the Blazers. Um, I'm excited to see what it does. It really pushes us to a more of a contender, you could say. But that'll just be even uh, more interesting to look at once the offseason's over, see how we completely finish out the offseason. Um, what's very interesting is the Blazers actually weren't going after Covington at first. He was their number two option. The first target that they had was Aaron Gordon. And then this is a guy that's been linked to the Blazers for a long time. Aaron Gordon was um, the Blazers' number one target. The Magic reportedly turned down the Blazers offers to get him. Probably they use the same package, a similar package to what they were trying to do for Robert Covington. But um, obviously we weren't able to pick up Aaron Gordon. But that would have been really very, very interesting um, to see if we were going to go after, see if if um, Roka was the only guy we were going to go after. Gordon probably would have fit maybe a little better uh, for some parts of the game. But overall, I honestly like Covington more because he brings more shooting to the team. I don't want to. I don't want to sacrifice shooting for defense. Um, so very interesting. Um, I'm actually excited. I would rather have Covington and Aaron Gordon. But that was just a very interesting thing that I just saw um, the other day. I still think we just still need a a guy that uh how it can play a small role and can play make it from the wing position, but we'll get to that. That's too much to ask for. Then the next big thing that happened for the Blazers today was Rodney Hood. Rodney Hood opted out of his $6 million player option, and he will become an unrestricted free agent. Obviously, he tore his Achilles um, 
but he's nearly had a full year to recover, so by the time the season starts, he should be ready to go. Um, this one really hurt. I was really wanting Rodney Hood to accept that player option, get one more year on that $6 million deal. Um, but he's still a free agent. We can still re-sign him, but um, it'll just have to be renegotiating a new deal. But now we'll probably have to use one of our three things we have. It's it's We have the mid-level exception. Let me figure out what this is because we've got a lot of just like interesting ways we can sign. We've got the mid-level exception for 9.3 million dollars we've got the BAE I'm not ex particularly sure what that stands for but that's for 3.6 million dollars and then a trade exception for 7.1 so we've got slots for him to re-sign or we could go for other guys but the reasoning be behind him probably opting out of that player option is not because he technically wants more money it's because he wants a long deal and when I say long I mean two to three years he wants security coming off of that Achilles injury because obviously an Achilles injury is one of the hardest injuries to come back from as a as a player because you lose your explosiveness you lose um, you, you just you lose it's it's the one that takes away the most explosiveness like I said um, but in my opinion I don't think Rodney Hood technically needs that as much because he's more of a catch and shoot type of guy more of a guy that sits in the corner is going to knock down your shots. Wow. And while he can play good defense, we're not relying on him to play good defense. He's camp, he's supposed to come in here and just knock down shots. And that's what he did last year. He was shooting around 50% from three at one point. Um, so sad, sad to see him go. Didn't really want him to opt out, which um, sucks because I thought he was going to. He could he could have been one of those guys that slide slid into the starting three. But obviously he's not now. Um, but yeah, I think he's going to try to get, he's probably going to look for around $6 million again, maybe more, maybe I'm completely reading this wrong, but I think he's just going to want a longer deal, like a two year, 14, a two year, 12, three year, 18 million, something along those lines. And I'm not just, just not sure if the Blazers are going to do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, it sucks. Like I said, it really does suck for Rodney Hood to just after such a high with the trade, um, it's kind of below there. But no one's ever. Everyone's gonna remember Rodney Hood for that clutch shot in fourth overtime for Denver. He's always gonna be loved in Portland. Um, I'm talking like we're obviously gonna get rid of him, but we, he could definitely resign still. Um, you never know. Maybe he had to do this because of the Rocco trade. A lot of things happen like that. Uh, but as it sits right now. The starting lineup will probably be Dame, CJ, for sure, Rocco and Nurk. And then you could throw Rocco at the three, Collins at the four. You could throw Rocco at the four. Um, you could throw Gary Trent Jr. in the starting lineup. You could throw Hood if he resigns. And then off the bench, you're going to have Simons, Gary Trent Jr., um, hopefully Hood if we sign him back. But obviously, we're going for some, we're looking for some people. Um, we're going to try to resign some people, sign some people, and then you're gonna, still going to have. Mario Herzonia, who opted into his player option at one point something million, but that's okay. Um, Nasir Little and Wenyan fighting out for those final ninth spots in the rotation. Uh, but obviously that mid-level exception is going to be very key. we got to add somebody very solid with it. I think we should just add another wing if we're not going to re-sign Hood. Um, but a guy we've actually been very interested in is Paul Millsap. Paul Millsap, obviously a little older coming off of his big contract with Denver, but the Blazers are very interested in signing him. And I think that would be a great pickup because that would bring in some veteran leadership at the, at the the um, in the front court. And then also it would just give us more depth in the front court, which is what we've always... What you, all, you can never have too much depth. Um, and I think that's a big need for us, a vet big... Uh, some guys we could go after is also Ibaka, and then obviously Millsap. Um, but I think a key for this offseason is the development of the young guys, Simons and Little. Um, if they develop, we could have a really deep roster and a pretty scary team, honestly. Um, it'll be interesting to see if we use uh, Whiteside in a sign-and-trade or something like that. I highly doubt that'll happen, but it'll be interesting to see the type of market that a Whiteside demands, and then also if we'll bring back Mello. Mello... 
I think Melo, sadly, is one that would want to chase after some money. And now that we brought in Rocco, he's a really intent on starting, most likely. Um, so I just I don't see us bringing back Melo. Probably, sadly, it was a great it was a great it was great fun while we had him, but sadly, not sure if we're gonna bring him back. Um, but that's really gonna do it for the podcast today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, actually, I got one more thing to do. One more thing to talk about. I'm gonna go through just. I want to talk about more of the NBA as a whole and where I think the Blazers will stack up this year against the Western Conference. Um, so if you go through, if you go through the um, playoff teams in the West for next year, who will most likely be in the playoffs? Um, you're going to get the Lakers and the Clippers, the two LA teams. Denver's going to make it. The Warriors are going to make it. The Blazers are going to make it. The Jazz should make it. Um, the Suns should make it now with Chris Paul, and the Mavericks should make it. I think those are the eight that should make it. So I'm going to throw those eight to the side. Then you're going to have, and obviously of those teams, the Warriors and Suns are the teams from last year that didn't make it that should make it this year. Now the teams that made it last year that should drop out are the Rockets and Thunder. The Thunder are going full rebuild, obviously. Chris Paul's being traded and Dennis Schroeder being traded. And then... The Rockets are about to go full rebuild for sure because James Harden is forcing his way out of Houston, and as of reported right now, there are deals, there are verbal agreements on the table that he will be sent to Brooklyn, and that Brooklyn is completely sending the whole house. Um, but that's besides the point. But I think they're for sure going to be rebuild. So that drops them out of the, even the playoff picture. And then the teams that could make the playoffs um, that have the talent to are the Pelicans. They should make the, or they shouldn't. They should contend for a playoff spot. They will be fighting for that. Um, the Grizzlies, obviously, they could have, they barely missed out in the playoffs from the play-in game. Um, and the Blazers obviously made it over them. And then the Timberwolves, they're going to have that first overall pick, and they finally get a full year with D'Angelo Russell and Carl Anthony Towns. So the only teams in the West that I see for sure most likely not making the playoffs is the Rockets and the Thunder and then probably the Kings. I even would throw the Spurs down there, but I can't because they still have talent because they're gonna, they still have DeMar DeRozan. They could trade him. You never know. But that is where I'm going to end the video. Um, hope you enjoyed it. If you're coming from Rip City Rundown Instagram, make sure to subscribe here. Um, to continue to hear these podcasts. Um, I really hope you guys all subscribe. I'll be probably doing something weekly, especially when the season starts going over games and stuff like that. But that'll be it, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you all later. Peace.